Hello everyone, my name is Cameron and welcome back to the channel and finally we're doing the Super Showdown predictions. Now for those of you who don't know, Super Showdown aired at 5 a.m. Eastern, that was when it was live for me. It was 5 in the fucking morning um, and I actually had to work that day at 11 a.m. So I could have watched it with two hours of spare before getting ready for work. But um, the reason I didn't is because I wanted to actually get sleep before work. Uh, <laughs> So I watched it, I watched part of it Sunday night, and I finished the rest of it last night. Um, and the reason being is because Jesse and I were both really tired Sunday night, and we fell, and he fell asleep during the six-man tag match. I was like, I watched a bit of it, and I was like, okay, I'm just going to turn this off and go to bed. So then we finished it up Monday after he got out of work. Uh, and then right after we both went back to bed, we both went to sleep because, again, we were both really fucking tired on Monday. Uh, so finally, we, but we finished it Monday, finished the last few matches, and finally I can actually get in this. Now, I have not watched Raw or SmackDown after Super Showdown. Uh, I will be watching those in about probably half an hour to an hour-ish. Um, but let's get into the Super Showdown review. First match of the night was the SmackDown Live Tag Team Championship match between the New Day, the Champions, and the Bar, the Challengers. Uh, Kofi and Xavier were going for the New Day. Uh, they were in control from the start. There's a lot of tandem offense. Uh, the Bar got control for a bit. Did the 10 beats of the Bodron, but stopped early. Uh, tag suplex. The Bar with a lot of power moves. Uh, Cesaro got sent out. Woods and Sheamus were legal. Woods was in control. Uh, DDT got caught. Irish curse. Bro kick gets avoided. Roll up. Cesaro comes in. Uppercut. Cesaro swing for the first time in a long time that I've seen that. Uh, sharpshooter gets locked in, uh, Kofi gets kept away, get, uh, ends up breaking up a pin. Uh, Kofi and Sheamus are outside, roll up by Woods, Kofi knocks Cesaro's legs down. In the dirt? What? Oh, knocks Cesaro's legs down in the dirty pin. Uh, Trouble in Paradise to Sheamus, tag finisher, New Day, uh, retain. Eight and a half out of ten, on one predictions. It was a good match. I actually really liked it. Um... Again, I don't know how much how I feel about the New Day being champs right now. Um, I'm not a huge New Day fan. I think if you've watched this channel for long enough, you probably know that at this point that I'm not a big fan of the New Day. I haven't really ever been a huge fan of the New Day. Um, and it's, it's nothing to do with the, the superstars in the team. It's more or less to do with their gimmick and how childish it is, I guess. And personally, it just doesn't appeal to me watching a bunch of grown men pull pancakes out of their clothes and shake their asses. Sorry. That's just that's just not what I enjoy watching when I watch wrestling. I don't want to watch a bunch of dudes twerking and throwing pancakes that were in their sweaty, sweaty singlet out to the crowd. I really hope people don't actually eat those pancakes because that's just... They're in Big E's singlet, you guys. Like, I mean, yes, the ones that Kofi throw are fine. The ones that Wood... I don't think Woods actually throws any. But the ones that Big E throws, just don't eat them, please. Please, dear God, do not eat the ones he throws out of his singlet. I mean, Byron Saxton probably would, but you shouldn't, because that's disgusting. It's just, that's just gross. That's man sweat all over your pancakes. Does that sound delicious to you? Next, the SmackDown Live Women's Championship match. Becky Lynch versus Charlotte Flair. Becky is, is in control from the start. It's a very fast-paced match from the beginning. Uh, Charlotte starts to gain some momentum. Armbar in. Gets relocked in. Does some joint manipulation of the fingers. Joint manipulation is such a fucking painful thing to watch because you're like, oh god, that looks pain. It looks like it hurts really bad when someone goes and fucking bends someone's finger back. And it's just like, ah, I don't. Like, god. Becky in control again. Charlotte starts taking over. Uh, Becky gets back on top. Lots of near falls. Flair going for the figure four, but gets avoided. Oh god, that was bad. Big boot, back and forth. Uh, strikes, spear, two count, moonsault to the knees, roll up, insiguri to Flair. Uh, Boston Crab gets uh, in on Becky. Lynch grabs her championship. Star stops her. Uh, by Lynch grabs her championship, I mean she walks out and goes to leave. Uh, sends her back in. Hits a spear. Figure four in. Bridges to the figure eight. Becky grabs the championship. And literally, something I've never seen someone do. Instead of doing the normal smash it down, she fucking goes like this. And whips Charlotte with the goddamn strap of the championship. Uh, Flair wins by disqualification. Becky retains. 10 out of 10. 0 2 on fiction. Charlotte attacks her after. Lynch fights back. Beck's bloater. Knee to the face. 
Uh, I think they had they had a, another match tonight on SmackDown, and I don't know how it ended because I haven't watched it yet. Next, the men's tag team match: Cena and Lashley versus Owens Eli and Elias. Uh, Lashley starting with Owens uh, tagged to Elias. Cena looking a bit leaner. He's he's a lot leaner. He's got a very JBL style haircut. And I know it's just for the movie, but he's got a very JBL style haircut. Um, oh my neck. Um. Yeah, he's just, you can tell he's definitely, uh, the stuff that he's doing with Jackie Chan over in China right now, like, he's working with Jackie Chan and his stunt team and all that, you can definitely see that he's leaning up a bit, which is actually kind of good to see. I, he always looks really overly muscly, and it's just, it's weird. Uh, Owens back in, taking control, Lashley taking control, lots of strong moves to Owens and Elias. Cena gets sent down, double team to Lashley. Elias and Owens in control, tag teaming in the corner. Uh, Lashley in a very bad way. Frog Splash, two count, Spine Buster. Uh, five moves of Doom by Cena. You know, the five knuckle shuffle, the uh, shoulder tackles, the power bomb, the AA. Then he does the sixth move of Doom, his new punch thing that he does, the anime style punch thing he does where he goes, and then, yeah, he does that thing. Uh, Cena wins for his team, one and two on predictions, seven out of ten. Uh, Cena goes on the mic, thanks to the fans. So WWE will always be his home. Um,. You know, he's, he's like, I, I always love it when I come back here. And yeah, you can see that he still loves being here, but he, he's here a lot less and you can see it. Uh, and then they had a weird meat pie commercial with, uh, Jimmy and, uh, Naomi and Jimmy was in a bathtub eating a meat pie and Naomi thought, Oh, Hey, it's like some special romantic thing. She walks all the way over there and he's in there eating a meat pie. It's like, Oh, Hey babe, didn't even hear you come home. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, what the fuck is an Australian commercial? Like, what the hell was that? Next, the women's tag team match. The Iconics versus Asuka and Naomi. Iconics have a weird face style promo because they're back home. Uh, control for the Iconics. Asuka and Naomi start gaining it. Double team by the Iconics. German suplex by Asuka to regain control. Split leg and moonsault. Uh, Billy Kay stops it. Missile drop kick. Billy... Brings Naomi down face first uh, on the apron. Asuka gets set in the barricade. The Iconics win after a tag move. Uh, one and three on predictions, eight out of ten. It was actually a pretty good match. Um, I probably should have gone for the Iconics knowing that they were in their home country. Uh, you see that sort of stuff happen a lot. Um, I also just realized the WWE Championship match happened before the Cruiserweight Championship match. Well then. Oh, but yeah, the Iconics won. It was an okay match. Next, the WWE Championship match. AJ Styles versus Samoa Joe. Uh, AJ takes it before the ring bell rings, uh, attacks before the ring bell rings. They both kind of attack each other. Uh, AJ in control. Joe with a powerful chop. Suicide dive to AJ. Joe in control again. Styles starts fighting back, diving forearms and back and forth strikes. Styles is in control. Both men get rocked by like a really heavy hitting move. Uh, Joe taking it again. Grabs a chair, AJ drop kicks it into his face, which is a really cool uh, part. Uh, AJ sets up the chair and sits on it, uh, knees, knees to the face. AJ gets caught and slammed into the setup chair, because as the rules of wrestling go, the Ten Commandments of Wrestling go, he who sets up the weapon will be slammed into said weapon. Um, Joe using the chair, brings in a table and sets it up. Joe goes through the table. Uh, clutches his knee. He, he kind of really fucked up his left knee when he went through it. Um, fucked it up. Uh, AJ pulls the ref away. Starts attacking the leg. Calf crusher in. Almost, at least. Uh, in his face. Calf crusher reversed in a coquina. 450 to the knee. Joe rolls out. AJ follows. More leg attacks. Phenomenal forearm to AJ. Or to Joe outside. Sends Joe into the ring. Uh, coquina. Styles fights out. German suplex. Muscle buster gets set up. But knee gives out, roll up to the coquina, roll up, calf crusher in. Joe uh, crawls to the rope, but does it, it obviously do nothing. Taps out, Styles wins, 2 and 3 on predictions, 15 out of 10. It was a really good match. Um, it's a little sad to see the feud end, and it seems like every, like, a bunch of the bigger indie stars that are now coming over to, to WWE and stuff and have gone up through NXT, because AJ Styles didn't really go through that. You know, like Shinsuke and like Samoa Joe and stuff aren't being utilized as well as AJ. Obviously, they haven't won the title, um, which kind of sucks. It's like, oh, they could do really w good work with the title. But nah, let's not give it to them. And it kind of it's kind of upsetting to see Samoa Joe and Shinsuke Nakamura being utilized 
improperly. I mean, Shinsuke is doing fantastic work with the United States Championship, but he could be doing fantastic work with the WWE Championship instead. Next, women's six uh, six woman tag match: The Rise God versus Ronda Rousey and the Bell Twins. Nikki starting it with Ruby. Uh, Nikki is in control. Tags in Brie. Liv gets in. Kicks to Brie's face. Good. She deserves it. Brie grabbed Liv's tongue for some reason. Uh, Nita Liv's face. Nikki tagged in. Logan in. Nita Nikki's face. Riot Squad in control. Morgan comes back in. Logan comes back in. Nikki being isolated. Uh, Ruby Riot comes back in. Nikki still being isolated. Logan comes back in. Brie gets dropped. Uh, Morgan takes down Ronda. Uh, she gets back up kind of fast. Ronda comes back in. All three of the Riot Squad are taken down. Uh, lots of punches. Samoan drop thing. Uh, Morgan and Riot brought down. Bree sent face first into the step, into the post. Good. Uh, Morgan stops the armbar. Both Morgan and Logan get dropped by Ronda. Armbar gets put in on both. Both of them tap. Rousey and the Bellas win. 3-3 three and three on predictions. 8 out of 10. Which... I, I know I haven't watched Raw yet, but I do know something that happened. The Bella Twins attacked Ronda. And Natalya came out and saved her. Why? Let me just, let me just, I'm going to go off on a tangent. Why the fuck is WWE deciding to do this? Nobody wants to see Nikki or Brie anywhere near a women's championship. Especially not Nikki. Okay? Especially not Nikki. Who should be going for the Raw Women's Championship? Ember Moon, Ruby Riot, Sarah Logan, Liv Morgan, Alexa, now, well, Mickey James, Alicia Fox, Sasha, Bailey, anybody on the roster except Dana Brooke, Alexa Bliss, and a few other women that honestly aren't as good could be going for the Women's Championship at Evolution. Who is going for the Raw Women's Championship at Evolution, though? Oh, right. Nikki fucking Bella with Brie Bella in her corner. No one wants to see that. And if you think I'm wrong, a bunch of people are already complaining about that. Because Nikki Bella sucks. Brie Bella sucks. They're both terrible in the ring. Neither of them should be near the, the goddamn championship. But somehow, in 2018, Nikki Bella is going for a women's championship on Raw. WB, what the fuck? It should be here's here's the match I'd I'd want to see. Ember Moon, Ronda Rousey. There you go. And you know how I want to see that ending? Ember Moon raising the goddamn championship high above her fucking head. We're about to watch probably what's gonna be one of the worst women's championship matches of all time. In the era of the women's revolution. I should specify that because of Trust me, they were a lot worse back in the day. You know why? Because we're about to see Ronda Rousey, a rookie and slightly overhyped rookie, versus Nikki Bella, someone who is garbage in the ring. I mean, it could be worse. It could be Brie, but still, I do not want. To, I'm not excited for that match. That's that's. I think that's the main event of Evolution. Like, why is that the fucking main event? I don't even know anymore. Next, the Cruiserweight Championship match. Cedric Alexander versus Buddy Murphy. Uh, big knee by Murphy. Two count. Right off the bat. Suicide dive by Murphy. Uh, regretting my prediction. I started regretting my prediction at this moment. Double knees. Two count by Murphy. Cedric gaining some momentum. Sleeper hold in. Super kick to Murphy. Michinuku driver by Alexander from the top rope, which was really cool to see. Suicide dive by Alexander. Springboard handstand kick by Alexander for a two count. Big kick by Murphy, uh, chance for Buddy. Kick to the face and powerbomb by Murphy for a two count. Alexander, another big knee. Cedric rolls him up. Spanish fly, lumber, lumbar check, sorry. Uh, two count, Cedric thrown out, lands on the apron. Springboard attack, caught by the knee. Murphy wins, three and four on predictions, 20 out of 10. It was a very good match. I'm very happy to see Cedric Alexander is no longer the champion because he was, it was kind of a boring reign, let's be honest. Buddy Murphy definitely deserves it. He's worked his ass off to get in the cruiserweight division. He has worked his ass off to get to that goddamn championship match. And props to Buddy Murphy. Good job, man. Winning it in your home, in your home country, in front of seventy thousand of your uh, of your uh, countrymen. Good job. You did very, very good work. 
Men's six man tag uh, six man tag match. Uh, Strowman Ziggler McIntyre versus the Shield. Ziggler McIntyre entered a bronze music. Already already downhill at that point. Why? Don't ever make them enter that fuckhead's music again. Make them enter to their own goddamn music. Because their fucking music is fantastic. Bronze music is garbage. Shield entering through the crowd with some Hannibal Lecter style masks on. Uh, Bell hasn't even rung and they're attacking each other. Ambrose sets up the announce table. Strowman being triple teamed. Getting ready to put him into a Shield triple powerbomb. But Ziggler and McIntyre stop it. Ziggler and Rollins in starting the match. Uh, Ambrose and Reigns are down. DDT for a two count. Uh, Drew comes in. Suplex, two count. Uh, Drew mocking him. Braun in. Ambrose and Reigns back up. Seth being destroyed. Ziggler in. Big elbow, one count. Drew in. Ambrose trash talking him a bit. More taunting to Seth saying, oh, your boys are right there. Um, Dolph back in. Seth fighting back. Sleeper hold gets locked in. Seth gains a bit of control, but then Braun comes back in. Uh, takes down Dean and Roman. Ziggler and McIntyre keeping them down. Uh, buckle bomb to Ziggler. McIntyre gets sent into the corner. Strowman dives from the top rope and misses. Good. Ambrose is back up. Ambrose and Ziggler are now the legal men. Uh, Dean in control. McIntyre distracts him. Dean regains control. Gets two count. Fighting up top. Diving elbow. Roll through. But Ziggler for a two count. Reigns gets up, McIntyre comes in, Roman gets tagged in, McIntyre gets sent out, hit with a drive-by drop kick. DDT to Drew. Uh, crowd is really quiet for some reason. Like, not even just the crowd, the crowd and the announcers completely dead silent. You could hear a goddamn cricket chirp in that fucking arena. That's how quiet it was. Accidental Superman punch to Dean, roll up, two count, power bomb by Roman. Ziggler breaks it after Drew kicks out. So he basically did nothing. Drew kicked out and then Ziggler broke it up, which is, he's like, oh, Michael Cole's like, oh, Ziggler breaks up and Drew kicks out. Like, no, Michael Cole, only one of those can happen, not both. Superman punch to Drew. Uh, what the hell? Oh, right. McIntyre, uh, Ziggler, and uh, Bitch, otherwise known as Braun Strowman. Set up for the shield, do like the shield ring entrance thing. Dean comes in behind them, looks over at Dean or uh, Drew and Dolph, nods, goes in the ring, drop kicks Braun. It was really cool. Uh, shield starts destroying Drew, triple power bomb. Strowman spears them and drops everyone. They were setting up for the triple power bomb. Strowman just came in and speared them. It was really awesome. Rain sent out, rolling uh, or Rollins sent out, runs through Reigns. Uh, and then Rollins, he does the, you know, Strowman does his stupid running shoulder tackle bullshit. Uh, Seth gets sent down two, zigzag, two count. Dean gets thrown out, spear to save Dean. So Braun, Braun went to do the run, run through thing to Dean. And out of nowhere, you just see fucking Roman spear him through a barricade. It was, it was awesome. Um, super kick, zigzag. Seth saves it from uh, from the super kick cl or zigzag claymore um, combo thing. Super kick by Seth. Uh, Dirty deeds to Ziggler. Shield win. Twenty out of ten. Four and four on predictions. It's a really good match. Shield won, which is uh, the right way for that to go. Uh, having the shield lose would have been really fucking stupid. Um, whoa, hold up. There we go. So yeah, I was really happy to watch the shield win. Especially since it was against Drew, Dolph, and Braun. And then Drew on Twitter is like, you can't defeat us. He was saying something about that. He's like, you can't defeat us. And I was like, but Super Showdown though. <laughs> like it showed somebody, the first thing I saw was a, uh, a, a response. And it was a person with the gif of Dolph Ziggler getting pinned at Super Showdown. It's like, huh, you guys can't be defeated, huh? Hmm, Really? Match number nine, men's singles match. The winner is the new number one contender for the WWE Championship, Daniel Bryan versus The Miz. Miz going right after him. Uh, fast attacks, mocking Daniel, gets caught by a kick. Yes kicks, last one gets reversed. Flying knees by Miz, you know the flying knee thing that he does. Roll up, Bryan wins, 4 out of 10, 5 and 4 on predictions. For the match between those two, it was very eh. It was very crappy, I didn't really enjoy it. Um, Dean, or... Er, Daniel winning by the roll-up was kind of like, okay, this is the penultimate match for this feud right now. You know, this is like the the final match for this feud, and this is how it ends. 
a cheap little roll up in about fucking 20 seconds. It was not one of my favorite match. It was probably my least favorite match of the night. And it was the only one that scored below 10, basically. Uh, or below 8 on, on the entire thing. Next, men's singles match, which is now no DQ. The Undertaker versus, the, versus Triple H. I put The Miz, I think, by accident. Long entrances, long introductions. Triple H ducks away a lot. Mox Taker, some back and forth. Triple H in control. Taker in control. Undertaker goes old school. Snake Eyes, Triple H. Need to take her. Um, Triple H saves uh, Sean from a choke slam. HPK attacks Taker. Kane runs him off. Triple H in control. Table brought out. Triple H flipped off, flipped off of Taker like he kind of was getting ready. Uh, he was going to do a pedigree through the table and then got flipped over. Neckbreaker by Triple H. Lots of back and forth. Triple H gets sent out. HPK checks on him. Triple H gets sent over the barricade. Fighting through the crowd. Taker choking him. Pedigree gets reversed uh, pretty badly in my opinion. They do fix the spot. They do the spot again later in the ring and it looked fine. I don't know why exactly it got messed up out in the crowd. Um, but it did. It looked really bad and it was just... It was really horrible. It was what actually made me think it was going to be a bad match going into this. Was that clip. Was a clip of that that I saw on Sunday. Back to the ring, HBK gets sent down by a right. Big boot to Triple H. HBK checking on trips after a chair shot. Uh, Triple H gets sent on the table. Big boot to HBK. Uh, Taker sets up for the suicide dive. Gets caught by a chair. Thank God, because he probably would have fucking died if he did a suicide dive. Um, Triple H in a choke slam position. HBK as well. They fight out of it. Sweet chin music to Kane. Kane gets sent through the table by Triple H. Choke slam Triple H. Uh, caught off a dive with the chair. Tombstone gets set up, hit, two count, Taker attacks the ref, uh, not entirely sure why. Ref gets sent out, attacking Triple H, some chair shots, Sean begging Taker to stop. He's like, you're next, but he's basically saying, come on, bring it on, uh, you're next. HP gets caught with uh, another punch, uh, spine buster, both men down. Pedigree for a two count, K chair gets set up on Taker's throat. Second rope, knee drop onto him. Kane pulls the ref out at two. HBK grabs the sledgehammer, hands it to Triple H. Kane goes, or gives Taker a chair. Sledgehammer hits the chair into Taker's face. Hell's Gate gets locked in, uses the sledgehammer to, uh, choke, take, to choke Taker. So it's kind of like the moment a long time ago when they were facing in the no DQ match. And at the end of the match, he's, Triple H is in the Hell's Gate and he's got the sledgehammer in his hand and he just drops it because he's passed out. I thought that's what they were going with. I was like, I was like oh, the ref's out right now, but they could go for this. They could, you know, but no. Uh, they both kind of passed out for a few seconds. HBK pulls uh, the hammer from Taker. Low blow to Kane. It looked like it was with the sledgehammer, but it might have just been down uh, under the belt. Uh, throws the hammer down. Choke slam after countering the pedigree. Sweet chin music. Second is uh, is blocked. Tombstone set up on Sean, but stopped by Sledgehammer. Sweet chin music, pedigree, three count. Triple H wins, 15 out of 10. Five and five in predictions. Not a bad match. I really enjoyed it. Uh, Triple H and HBK hug. Hunter is crying. Uh, they all hug. Four men, you know, raise their arms. Can you take a share of look? Attack Triple H and HBK. Tombstone, Triple H. HBK gets sent through the announce table. That's how it goes off the air. Apparently on Raw, they're setting up for DX versus uh, the Brothers of Destruction at Crown Jewel. But I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I'm kind of or this video. I'm kind of rushing it because my timer or my uh, space on my phone is about to run out for the video. Stay golden. Peace.